So we see the money spent in the game Big Bula being spent on Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Heroes. Now, what I'm going to do today is I am going to spend $100 and open up a bunch of stuff. And even though people are spending their money on Galaxy of Heroes, I have to say, where the game is right now, it's probably the most free-to-play friendly we've seen it ever in the history of the game, mainly because we just have so many amazing, accessible, free-to-play characters that you can get early on in the game, and they have viability throughout the whole entire span of Galaxy of Heroes, even till the end. End game and what we're gonna do today is cover 15 characters I think are the best free-to-play characters in the game that aren't legendaries that aren't raid characters and they don't require Zetas and I think they're gonna be great additions to end game players middle players and especially the beginning players in the game we're talking about characters that you can easily access even at the very beginning of the game or at least close to the beginning of your Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes journey so we have a lot to talk about so let's just dive into it and first open up with my main topic of the Phoenix squadron now I know we're gonna talk about individual characters and I just want to make sure I say this 5 million times in many videos out there. The Phoenix Squadron is the singular best faction that a beginner player should farm mainly because they're just needed for so many legendary events. We have the Palpatine legendary event that need rebel characters. Phoenix knocks that out right there. Also, in my opinion, Grand Admiral Thrawn is probably the best versatile character in the game period and the phoenix characters are needed to unlock grand admiral throughout so that's another reason why you should farm your phoenix characters at the beginning because right there you knock out your palpatine and grand admiral thrawn now there's no specific order on how i'm gonna go about this list but the first character that immediately came to mind is kylo ren unmasked and my goodness he has the singular best farming node in the whole entire game the energy cost is very very low but the thing that is just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen is the fact you get Kylo Ren and his ship, which is one of the best ships in the game, in my opinion, right on the very same note. It's a two for one special, guys. It's a no brainer. This is definitely a character you should be farming as early as possible. Now, besides the fact that this character is super accessible, one of the great things is that he is a taunting tank. And one thing about Galaxy of Heroes now more than ever is taunting tanks are extremely important, especially when you need like five, six, or seven squads. Having a taunting tank is just really great to have. His halt ability has a lot of stuff going on. He gets to stun the primary target he's looking at, and that stun can't be resisted. It can't be evaded. He regains 10% health, and on top of that, he gets taunt for one turn. If you're looking to get BB-8 quite early on in the game, the first order is the faction that you need, and Kylo Ren, if you're trying to farm characters for the BB-8 event, Kylo Ren Unmasked is a no-brainer choice, and towards the end of the game, once you finally get a hold of Zeta Mats, Kylo Ren's leadership, Merciless Pursuit, is a solid investment. It really gets the first order going, and he is by far as of now the best first order leader and just another little tidbit kylo ren's ship is one of the best in the game as of now too so right there you're getting kylo ren and the ship so guys by far this is the character you really should get no matter what and speaking of kylo let's move on to our next character which is gonna be the old school kylo ren that we had for quite a while in the game now this kylo has an attacker based kit but when you look at it in totality he kind of has a lot of tank attributes has a lot of health a lot of protection and a lot of durability and he gets protection regen towards the end once you finally get the Zeta Mat for his outrage ability. And although it might not seem significant to end game players as much, at the beginning and mid level, you're going to see a lot of Luminaras, Jedi Counselors, and Beerusafi. And being able to apply healing immunity stops a really important mechanic that beginner players often use. So, right there, that is pretty good. But besides that, he's great for the AAT raid. The Sith raid, the First Order is one of the best factions to use in phase four of the Sith raid. And on top of that, Dark Side territory battles. And I imagine going forward, the First Order will get even better because they have to add characters like Praetorian Guard and Snoke as well. But with that being said, let's move on to our next character that we have on the list. Now, one of the characters that has stood the test of time is Captain Rex. My goodness, I don't think anyone expected him to be this viable almost two years after he came out into the game. Now, there are really two reasons why Captain Rex has stood the test of time without any reworks, without any Zetas, without any clone reworks for that matter. And it's mainly because of his leadership known as Brothers in Arms. Now, yes, it benefits clone allies, but the most important thing is that it is a catch-all leadership. When you read towards the bottom, any ally that is under Captain Rex will be getting 7.5% turn meter when an ally is critically hit. With squad discipline, we have so much going on here. First of all, he gets to cleanse all negative status effects, which is huge right there. But on top of that, once you're getting rid of those status effects, you're putting up tenacity up, which is one of the most powerful buffs in the game to prevent things like Emperor Palpatine's stuns, his shocks, Vader's damage over time's ability blocks, things that slow down your team. Captain Rex protects you with this tenacity shield, but if you thought 
but that wasn't enough. With all that mentioned, you also get turn meter for each negative buff that or negative debuff that is dispelled. So so much is going on right here. And to this day, we see Captain Rex be a part of the meta and one of the strongest counters to Emperor Palpatine, who is currently considered the king of the meta. Now this is going to be very relevant because Bounty Hunters got a rework, and with that, we technically have a Boba Fett 3.0. This guy has been through two reworks, and he's even better than he ever was before. Now the first thing to really point out is the fact that this guy is labeled as a scoundrel and a bounty hunter but more importantly the scoundrel tag is very significant because we have credit heists in the game and if you can do the highest level of the credit heist as early as possible that is great because you're going to get so much currency and Boba Fett really helps you get to that point. Now besides credit heists like Kylo Ren he just has a very solid all around kit. His basic can attack two times, has some decent damage, his death from above is really one of the biggest highlights because he can apply ability block to everyone but also execute is such a cool ability when he uses this ability it can do some insane damage depending on how many status effects both positive and negative are on the character he's attacking and besides night sister zombie this ability can prevent revives and that's really important because you might see old daka quite a lot in the early on and mid level of the game and being able to stop a revive from happening is super crucial and he can also reduce the cooldowns of one when he defeats an enemy and recently they added the fact that he can apply healing immunity if this ability does not defeat anyone and, the, and, and on top of all that this ability cannot be evaded uh, next up we have old ban now this guy he was pretty okay before his rework but once he got a rework in the recent summer of 2017 he just went from uh to wow he's pretty good <laughs> and old ben he is a taunting tank and dare i say probably the top four maybe even three taunting tanks with general kenobi sign up there and in the situation old ben dies off because he's taking a beating for your team it's actually not the worst thing in the world because he's granting a variety of buffs and bonuses to your team such as offense up we have speed up increased health and protection a lot of stuff going on there that doesn't need a zeta and the other thing that just really shuts down the enemy team is his mind tricks ability which even at the time before the rework was pretty significant now this mind trick ability can shut down the enemy team because it cannot be evaded and he can remove turn meter he can apply ability block and offense down and on top of all that anytime that a, one of these things are being resisted he's granting bonus turn meter to jedi and rebel allies and seeing that rebels are actually quite significant in the game this will grant them a ton of a additional turn meter when they need it. Other things to point out, you can use him to unlock Emperor Palpatine right there. That's actually quite significant. And then Territory Wars, I use him for every single Territory Wars because I always need a good tank in a lot of my teams. And when I have a rebel team, whether an offense or defense, I know for sure old Ben's going to be playing in there somewhere. Next up on our list is going to be Wedge and his buddy Biggs in a few moments as we'll talk about. Mainly, he is one of the superior rebel leaders before you get Commander Luke Skywalker. So much damage out, but when he's leading, you're getting health regeneration under rebel hero and so many other bonuses that are great for especially light side territory battles. I'm always using Wedge for light side territory battles and he makes even my weak rebels so much more competitive to go through all those waves. And on top of that, his unique ability Red Leader works great with Big's Dark Lighter because he shares all these bonuses with Biggs Dark Letter. So that is pretty huge right there, as we'll find out with Biggs in a few moments. Since he's a rebel, he can be used for the Emperor Palpatine Legendary event, and I always use him as the leader for my Rancor Raid solo squad. And if you want to know why I'm using him, check out my Rancor Raid solo guide to figure why I am using this guy. But other than that, overall, very solid rebel leader. But let's move on to his close buddy, which is going to be our friend Biggs Dark Lighter. I mean, the simplest way to put it is if you have peanut butter, you have jelly. If you have jelly, you have peanut butter. And if you do it any other way, you're just insane. I mean, but seriously, these guys just have so much synergy between Wedge and Biggs. If you have Wedge, you got Biggs. If you have Biggs, you're running Wedge. Whether Wedge is the lead or not, it doesn't matter. If you have Wedge, you got to have Biggs on here. And plus, he's great because he has so much damage output. And I use him for the Rancor Raid. I use him for Territory Wars and Territory Battles. But by far, the other main reason to get Biggs is his ship. Probably one of the best ships in the game, maybe the best ship in the game that almost every single person is running because of the fact his ship can taunt. Now, next up on our list is going to be Lando. You'll see there's going to be quite a few rebels out there because of the fact they're so free to play friendly and just so viable in many things. But one thing that's really interesting about Lando is that he is a scoundrel. And like our Boba Fett conversation, 
being able to get as many great scoundrels early on sets you up really in a really good position for when the credit heist becomes available to you because you want to clear that highest level of the credit heist as early as possible. But the other thing that is pretty darn good is his double down ability and this is pretty much the other key thing about Lando because when he scores more than one critical hit this ability resets its cooldown and on top of that deals 100% more damage the next time around and this is an AoE ability meaning that he's going to attack every single character on the other side of the field and at times this can do like 20,000 damage and I have met like gear 11 so load this guy up with like critical damage mods to get as much damage output as possible out of this. I use him all the time for territory battles that is definitely the biggest thing to use because there are so many enemies to critically hit and on top of that territory wars very solid but again the most important thing probably as well is the fact that he's a rebel and can be used for the Emperor Palpatine event so again I'm trying to recommend characters that have a lot of dual or triple purposes in the game. Now goodness gracious TIE Fighter Pilot this is a character Character that went straight free to play none of the cadence stuff where you got to wait four months for a character to become free to play this was the last pure free to play character we got straight into the game that is pretty accessible he's on a uh, battle 4b very accessible in the game and he has so much viability in the game and he has one of the best ships in the game too long story short he has a lot of damage output and he's quite evasive he gets a lot of force which means you won't be able to hit him as much and that kind of compensates for his low health and protection but he's also one of the fastest characters in the game with, with not that much speed mods he has 181 speed meaning his base speed is 170. he also has a mass buff immunity ability which is really important especially for trying to prevent the other team from taunting or gaining a very important buff that'll slow him down right there and he has ability block on top of it that he applies to the target he's looking at so a very simple kit which is great sometimes simple is better keep it simple stupid as I like to say and I've made a ship video on ranking all the ships and he has one of the best ships in the game he evades so much he has the highest base evasion for a ship in the game and when he evades he grants bonus terminator to the capital ship and he can get foresight and he does some pretty big damage this guy is a no-brainer and I wish we can get more free-to-play characters like this that are simple and that are free to play early on in the game without having to wait four months for them be for them to become free to play and he's also great for the r2d2 event you need empire characters for r2d2 and r2d2 is one, is one of the best legendary characters out there so again you're getting a lot of use out of this guy some more important empire characters to talk about that aren't legendary or raid rewards or any of that stuff grand moff tark now you're gonna get a lot of shards of this guy when you finally unlock ships and right next to Thrawn, this guy is going to be the second best fleet commander in the game before you finally get access to the Chimera. Now, Grand Moff Tarkin has this interesting thing that's going on. When he's increasing his potency, he's increasing his damage output for his ultimate firepower ability, but it also increases his defense when he's stacking up his potency. So it's kind of like he's charging up his potency, which is like a Death Star charging up to get a big attack out. So that's essentially what the developers were keeping in mind when reworking Grand Moff Tarkin. And besides the fact that ultimate firepower firepower can do some pretty significant damage we're also seeing that he has a hundred percent chance to remove 50 percent turn meter which is a pretty important thing turn meter removal is quite significant in the game where it is now which makes him very viable for the rancor raid as well and then we have intimidation tactics now he's going to get potency up which again translates into more defense and more damage output for his ultimate firepower ability but he's also applying critical chance down and offense down for three turns quite a long duration which makes him great to shut down enemy rebel teams as well as dark side terror battles because you're going to be fighting so many rebels out there and i completely forgot to mention this he is such an important character for ships due to the fact you need him to take on the zeta ability challenge for ships and zetas are so important in the game they're the most probably the most important end game mechanic so getting him up as early as possible farming him farming a ship is really crucial to get those zetas as early as possible and click on the card in the top right hand corner if you want to guide and what it means to get a zeta and what is a zeta so pretty much at this point you and i just went over the top 10 list of free to play characters that i think you should have in your inventory and for time saving purposes of this video i'm going to show slides of the last five characters kind of briefing you on why i think they should also be in your list of course there are so many other great characters in this game that are free to play for example i wanted to put death trooper on this list but since you can't access him until much later on in the game i took him off the list but characters like him they are so crucial for the game especially for the sith raid and many other aspects but hopefully so far this list that we went over today will be helpful for you because i think at any stage in the game whether a beginner middle game player or end game player pretty much every single one of these characters
characters has such an important use in various game modes. But you guys let me know down below. What do you think? Put it out, put down some more recommendations. I'm sure people are going to read the comments, look for more suggestions on who they should farm. But I think most can agree this 15 list will take you so far in the game. No matter if you're level one, no matter if you're level 85, there are so many uses going on with these characters. And I hope this list was helpful for you guys. And if you did enjoy this video, go ahead, leave me a like, comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking and subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And as always,